Hey friends, welcome back to Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney and today's video is going to be super fun. We are raiding our stash of craft supplies because we're not leaving our house. We are staying home and staying safe, but we are going a little stir crazy. So we are gonna grab some of our supplies and show you guys some inspiration. You can use anything from across your house. And we also wanna challenge you to raid your stash and do some DIYs. So let's get started. So like I mentioned, so many of these projects are probably items that you don't have sitting at your house. What are the odds if you do? That's awesome. But really this is just to inspire you to one, shop your house and two, shop your stash of craft supplies and get creative and get creating with some of the stuff that you have. Okay, so here we go <laughs> down to the basement. Honestly, it is slightly a hot mess down here and this is why when I was tagged in all those share your craft stash things, <laughs> I strategically avoided them because I have stuff literally everywhere down here. And so here is a ton of stuff. Got a ton of stuff in here, so let's quickly organize and I can find some stuff to DIY with. First up are these really cute springtime, but you can use them for year round little terracotta planters. It's a super simple upcycle. So I started with these two clay pots I got from the Dollar Tree. I got some stamps from the Target Dollar Spot, an ink pad also from the Dollar Spot, some Waverly chalk paint, a brush for the paint, and some jute twine. Also, I wanted to throw out, if you've got any of these extra tablecloths, these are great for crafting, and that was left over from Thanksgiving last year. So step one is to coat your pots with the color of your choice. I decided to go with white, but you could honestly paint them whatever color. Then I used some of this Buffalo Check fabric just to give the top section a little bit of color, but not too much to stick with my overall neutral theme. And then I applied the ribbon with some hot glue around the top so that it kind of gave it a border. After I did that, I added probably about five times around some Dollar Tree jute twine and just tied some cute little bows on there to finish off the top. And then my final step was to stamp both of the pots. So I wanted to do one more springy and one more kind of every day you could use year round. So the one I'm doing now says fresh cut flowers on it. And I went kind of quick, but I liked that it looks like a typewriter, like old vintage with the stuff around the outside. And then I also did be kind. And then it was time to decorate the pot. So I just grabbed some greenery I had from around my house that was just kind of chilling, not in the right spot. So I've got some Bullseye's Playground tulips. I've got some lamb's ear from Walmart and then these little kind of lamb's ear greenery farmhouse things from the Dollar Tree. These are such a great addition to my little table in my living room. I just like that they give that area a pop of color. It also goes really well with my fresh flower market box that I made in a previous video, which I will link up in the cards and down below for you. But overall, I love how easy these were to make and they look really good on my upcycled Goodwill pedestals. So win-win. Up next is this rise and grind sign. I wanted something for my coffee bar. However, you could put whatever saying you want on your sign. This is really customizable. So I had a ton, ton, ton of these photo frames. I must've been gonna do something and I never did. So I grabbed those, some wood beads, some buffalo check ribbon, some floral wire, and then also those letter stickers from the Dollar Tree. Step one is to dismantle your frame. So I just popped out the back and the insert. You can pitch those, you won't need them. And then I took out the glass, set that aside. You will need that. And then I gave the outside two coats of Waverly chalk paint. I wanted it to look covered and not look messy, but I also wanted the black to show through a little bit so you have that rustic appeal. 
And then while my frame was drying, I went through and figured out what I wanted to put on the frame. So originally it was going to say coffee until cocktails because the top of our bar is coffee and then the bottom is where I keep like wine and such. However, that didn't fit. So then I had to call an audible right in the middle and decide to do rise and grind. So a lot of times you guys see stuff that's 100% that we put out on YouTube and I just wanted to let you know that we all have fails. That's why we have huge stashes of this that there's stuff just sitting there that we can now use for this video so just fyi and then i put it back into the frame use the little um, prongs to hold it in place and then i thought it was a little blah so i wanted to add a little bit of something to it so i took this floral wire and i actually had this left over from my collab um, when courtney sent me all the stuff for the dollar tree box challenge if you missed that i will link that video for you too because we're all sitting around watching youtube i'm sure <laughs> Um, but then I took some wood beads, I put it on the stronger floral wire so it would hang up as a hanger, and then I just added some of these wood beads. This pack came from Michael's, I will link it down below um, for you for future reference. I do not condone leaving your house at this point um, to go get craft supplies, so just FYI there. Then I used my glue gun. This is honestly just the cheap like Dollar Tree glue, so it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but I put some glue down pushed the floral wire into the glue, and then I added a ton of glue onto the top. This is probably not the most like non-janky way to do it, but you know, it worked and we're using what we've got. I repeated that step on the other side and then I just added a little black and white buffalo check bow to match the little canister that I have on our coffee bar. And I really, really like it. I like that once the welcome spring sign comes down, I can hang it on the wreath up there. Um, and I really like how the wood beads give it a little bit of a little extra oomph. Up next is this DIY farmhouse scroll, and I decided to use some lyrics from a Dan and Shay country song. So this base is made up of the craft paper. I had a ton of this left over from Christmas. I did DIYs with it. I wrapped gifts with it. So I was going to use up the rest of this roll. You also need some jute twine. And then this is optional, but I used some wooden dowels also from Courtney from that collab. So she's just, you know, covering this whole video. And then also some of those peel and stick letters again. So step one is to figure out about how tall you want it to be. So I really just eyeballed this. You want to give yourself probably a good four to five inches on either end, just so then that way you can trim it. You can figure out what length you want instead of cutting it too short because you're going to need some slack to wrap it around the poles and you'll see that in a minute. Now I knew I didn't want the full length. You can make this as big or as small as you want, but I wanted it about half the length. So I folded it in half and gave myself a straight crease, kind of as a guideline. I think I can cut pretty straight, but um, you know, having some help is always appreciated. So then I went through with the handle of the scissors, really made that crease deep so that I could cut it. So I took my time, went through, made sure I cut it straight because this is gonna be an exposed edge. And then once I had that, it was time to create the kind of weight for the top and the bottom. Now these are optional, but I've made them with and without, but I like making them with these just because then you've got weight at the top and the bottom. It hangs better, it stays open better, just overall it works well. So for this particular width, I needed three of the wood rods. If you've got like dowel rods you're getting from Walmart or something, you know, you might already have it at the length, but this was my way of getting what I needed. And then I added it to the bottom and the top of the scroll. So I just started by using some hot glue and started rolling up the scroll, similar to what I did for my most recent kind of bunny sign. Um, but you want it to look like kind of what it looked like in the olden days where they, you know, would open it up and hear ye, hear ye, one of those situations. Um, so that's what you're looking to do, but you want it to stay open and that's where this wood comes in place. It'll keep it all together. It's glued down and it will kind of hang the way you want it to. Once I did that, I used some weight in the center so it didn't roll up on me. And then I did the same thing to the top. Once that was done, I tied some jute twine on either side. Now you can make this as long or as short as you want, depending on where you're gonna hang it. What I did is I gave myself a little bit of slack and then I just knotted the top where it was and then off to Pinterest to figure out what lyrics I wanted to put on the sign. You know I 
want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you Finally, this faux shiplap kind of brick looking sign, and I thought the saying was pretty timely right now. So this sign is made out of the tumbling tower game from Dollar Tree. I had a ton of these from projects that never came to fruition. And then you just need some sort of backing. I use the scrap wood, but you could use a Dollar Tree sign. You could use um, some like of that foam board from Dollar Tree. You just need something to stick your bricks to. So then I went through and did kind of a offset pattern. You could honestly do them all straight. You could do them all like kind of off center. You could do them vertically, horizontally, whatever floats your boat. But I went through, added some hot glue to each one of the bricks and I stuck them down just kind of in like a brick pattern. So the end of each one ended up being kind of in the middle of the one on the top and the bottom. So I went through, stuck all of those down, and I used just under two containers for this size. The piece of wood on the back for size reference is 16 inches wide by four inches tall. And this was just scrap wood I had hanging out in the basement that I haven't ever made a project with. So I thought, why not today? So then once you have your sign assembled, I took mine outside, I grabbed some dark walnut Minwax stain, which is my favorite, some Dollar Tree cleaning gloves, and an old t-shirt, and here is the finished product after I stained it. You're going to want to let that dry at least an hour because you're going to be painting on it and you don't want your paint to turn like a gross brown color because it's not sealed. Then I printed out this decal. Like I said, I think this is pretty timely for the world we're living in right now. I will link the image down below because I created this in Canva and I will also link details on where I get my vinyl and everything down below like I always do. Um, I order online so you can get it shipped to you. Then after I stuck it, I used some Mod Podge to make sure that it was stuck down, especially with the different bricks not being fully, you know, the same level. I wanted to make sure that paint wasn't going to seep under and make my stencil look terrible. So then I took my Waverly chalk paint, I put a little bit on with the end of the brush, and then I also flipped it on its side so that white part of the foam brush, I went through and did some dabbing, and I did that throughout the entire sign so that it was covered, but it also gave it that kind of like weathered look. Then once that dried, I went through with my Cricut tool and started peeling up the stencil. So then that way that revealed the wording underneath in that pretty dark wood color. If you happen to not be able to see the little pieces, you can always use a light. I use the light from my phone and that really helped me see everything and pull it off. I really like this sign. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. I just kind of figured I'd wing it and see what happened, but I do really like it. I like how simple it is, but then also you can kind of fit it in a lot of different areas because of the size of it. I would love for you to share on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, anywhere that you can connect with me and share your projects. Be sure to tag me because I would love, love, love to see what you guys are creating. Please stay safe out there and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.